Hello guys, it's me Simu Orohoro and in this video I'll talk about a topic Frankly, I wanted to talk about it for a long time and I have scattered some of its ideas through several videos But I didn't talk about it in the way I really wanted because I know that such topics don't attract many viewers But only a certain group who are interested in such topics. That's why guys I need from you to smash the button like Put some of your reacts in this video guys to make it appears as much as possible to the others and I'll be really thankful if you did that. So the title of the video is the strongest race in Bleach. Of course by the word strongest I don't mean the term of power we usually talk about like the strongest Bankai, the strongest Kido user or the one with the highest reacts. Although in fact the nobles are distinguished by such characteristics such as Ishin Shiba, Kyoraku, Ukitaki, Byakia, Yorichi, all of these people are nobles. Ichigo also is a half noble and they are all distinguished by great strength in terms of these skills. But the power I'm talking about is the power of authority. How can a group of persons be able to control the rest of people? Because of their race, because of their influence and because of their organizations or laws that they established and because of the history they possess. In addition, I can say the power of decision, it can be the real power in some situations and the main example we have is Ryu. The king of souls, we can consider him the most powerful entity in the story of Bleach. But despite that, he accepted the decisions of the ancestors of noble families who were undoubtedly less powerful than him. But sometimes, power may appear in the strength of personality and cunning as well as a long-term thinking. And all these points meet in the nobles. And the nobles for more than a million years have taken control over the world of soul society by harnessing all means to implement their plans. These people guys are the cornerstone of the story of Bleach. In fact, if Kubo had some courage and decided to focus on them, we would have seen Bleach as a story in other dimensions. Because in the end, the issue of nobles is not as if Kubo couldn't talk about it in the manga because the lack of time or illness. No, but it was a personal desire from him not to touch their subject. Anyway, what caught my attention about the nobles in Bleach is that they are the reason why the original world was divided into the known Bleach worlds. And these ancestors, somehow they made Ryo accept their decisions that united in one decision. The current world must change. And that event that occurred in the distant past is defined as the original sin. Meaning that the current words in Bleach are based on a sacrifice made by the ancestors in order to achieve their own vision of the world. And here is where the real problem began. Because this point in itself made some characters refuse what happened. And I'm talking here about Aizen Sosuke and Yuhabach, each according to his own vision. And so with the passing of years, the three worlds have become self-contained, as if it existed from the beginning in this way. Generations of nobles have gone and generations have come. But the legacy left by the ancestors didn't change. That system on which the worlds were built, in one way or another, was serving nobles and only them. The nobles settled in Serechi, which can be considered the capital of the whole world, and only pure souls live there and they are the nobles and the rest of the souls live in the Rekongai while the real world we can consider it as a second class world the Shinigami and noble families many of them see humans as inferior creatures Aizen Sosuke said to Ichigo how can a human like you defeat me? Ichibi said the same thing to you Habach. He said you are just a lowly human. And this mentality of racial superiority was implanted in the minds of the pure souls because they thought they are the most powerful and supreme race. Therefore, it seems to me that the ancestors of noble families decided to live in the world of the dead, so to speak, instead of the real world. And they also chose Sirichi as their residence and surrounded it with gate guards as well as a wall connected to the royal palace that falls to protect Serichi whenever it's in danger. All of this for what? 
to protect the nobles who live there and to separate them from the rest of the souls which are originally going to be souls coming from the human world. And here appears the manifestation of the inferiority that I spoke about. Because the nobles are the opposite of the rest of the souls, they were born in Serity. And what is more interesting is that the concept of Shinigami existed a long time ago. It can be said that Shiba Ancestors was the first person to give the first building blocks to the concept of Shinigami. But in the end, the role of the Shinigami was to serve the nobles to a greater degree. The Shinigami role was, and still is, like the role of a traffic policeman, regulating the flow of souls from the real world to the world of the soul society. And all of this in order to maintain the balance of the worlds. And when we talk about maintaining the balance, we're talking about preserving the new world formed by the nobles in a million years ago. In other words, the Shinigami are first and foremost, and for hundreds of thousands of years, this was their main role. Of course, we don't know how the Shinigami organized their affairs and what weapons they used to fight at the time. In addition to the formation of a military arm that protects the system that they established and, and they are the Shinigami, they also established the Central Room 46. And this is the most important point in this matter. We don't know when this organization was established, but it can be considered as a cover for a deep state that exists in the Soul Society. This organization is the highest judicial body in the Soul Society, and it's in charge of enacting laws and the issuance of judgments. And the funny thing here <laughs> is that all its members are from the nobles, 40 sages and 6 judges. In other words, the nobles choose a few men from among them in order to carry out some of their orders in the form of laws. Moreover, I will give you another perspective that shows how the nobles manipulate the most powerful personalities. I started to think that Yamamoto, it can be said, he is the second to Ryu. How is that? Ryu had mighty power and the nobles took advantage of it to divide the world and made him the backbone of it. As for Yamamoto, when he created the good 13 for the first time, what was its definition? It's a squad that doesn't care about honor or pride, and they are just a group of killers. But then in a way Century Room 46 made this squad affiliated with. Rather, it is strange that even the concept of the first Gote had changed. Notice in this scene what Kiski said about the Gote 13 and the pendulum arc. He said that the Gote 13 is a noble organization. And this show how the nobles introduced the concepts they wanted in this organization and put them under their hands. As this page shows, Gote 13, the Omitskido, which is considered the internal intelligence service, and the Kido division, all are under the grip of the nobles. Because in my opinion, the ancestors are like some rich families in our real world who may do some dirty work in the beginning in order to pave the way for their future generations. And this is exactly what the noble did. They divided the original world, they put Ryo in a cocoon, and they torn him and took every strong thing from him, his arms and the rest of his organs. And above all of this, the strongest Shinigami in the story, who is Ichibi, remained next to him. And this last one, as he said in the novel, he doesn't really care about what happens in the soul society, as long as the royal palace is safe. It is true that it may be said that this may be Ryu's witch as well, but the real desire that was clear was of the noble families, so that they left Ichibi with Ryu and they made anyone who has an unusual invention might use it against them uh, at some point in the time, they made him promoted to Zero Squad. And the second member was Nimaya, the creator of Zanpakuto, and after him, uh, I think Shuchara, the creator of Shihakusho, and after him, Kurinji, and finally, Hikofuni. And I can tell you more. The nobles also possess weapons of mass destruction, so to speak. Secret weapons capable of turning the table of any battle. And I'm talking here about the Holy Swords, such as the Enrakyochen sword of the Tsunayashiro family. We can even consider the Hakyokun sword that Nanao has a weapon belonging to the central room 46. Because 
this organization was aware of the existence of that sword with the Easy clan, and it was considered as one of the sacred treasures of Serechi. And any exposing that treasure to damage, its owner will be executed. And this is what happened to Nanao's mother. Because Century Rome 46 knows how dangerous that sword is, and that if it falls into the wrong hands, it may pose a danger to Ryu himself. And this basically means a violation of the general security of the world. And here is where the strength of this organization. As I said, this central room is just a cover for a deep state that is controlled by the nobles. So even what Aizen Sosuke did by killing them wasn't a big thing, because they were just a front. And the evidence is that, is that as soon as they were killed, they were replaced with a new ones. So, the central room was used by nobles to implement the laws according to their vision. For example, Nanao's mother was executed because she lost the sacred sword, Hakyoken. In return, Tokinada killed his wife, Kakyo. And the most that was taken against him was stripping him from his position as a Shinigami. And the confiscation of his Zanpakuto, and it's over. That's why Kanami Tosen is considered one of the characters who suffered from this corrupt system and saw the need to change it, even if that meant creating a whole new world. And frankly, many other characters also suffered. Among them are noble characters themselves, such as Azashiro Soya. The latter family was from the nobles, but at a period of time, the society, the society of nobles experienced a fierce struggle between the families. Each family tried to entrap the other until the entire Azashiro family was taken to one of the to one of the hollow's pits and killed. Therefore, we may understand why Aizen Sosuke wanted to change the world. He saw that Ryu didn't deserve to be a ruler because he was being controlled. Yu Habach wanted to restore the world to its previous state. Of course, we can't say for sure that the world they wanted will be an ideal world. This is why I believe that some characters such as Kyoraku, Urahara Kiski, Yamamoto, and the rest of the Shinigami who know, who know the full truth believe that the world, even if it's based on, on original sin and even if its foundations are dirty with corruption, things cannot be changed the way Aizen Sosuke and Yuhabach wanted. Because in the end, we can't change the beginning, but we can change our ending. It can be changed from the inside, from the inside the people who once their ancestors committed a sin. So guys, this was the end of this video. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.